There are a plethora of options when buying a new monitor for your Mac Studio. And I mean so many. We've got the new Studio Display, the LG 5K, the new Alienware OLED Ultra Wide, the new LG 40 inch Ultra Wide 5K, and many other relatively unknown brands promising accurate color, large sizes, and a low price. But by far, my favorite monitor to use with the Mac Studio cost me far less than any of these, and I'm talking anywhere from $175 to $50, depending on where you're looking. And the best part is that this monitor is actually made by Apple. This huge display right here is the Apple 30-inch cinema display, which originally cost about $3,300 but you can easily find these for sale in the used market for as little as $50. And recently, I saw one of these thick, and I mean thick displays for sale in mint condition for 50 bucks, and I almost snagged it to add a second 30 inch big boy to my small desk here to just, for really just to test the weight limit of this small desk. This professional display is from 2004. It's a 2560 by 1600 pixel monitor, and it was the largest high resolution display ever created in 2004. Even though it's 18 years old, it still looks as if it was made for the Mac Studio. I mean, check it out. This thing is huge, and it does have that old school kind of feel since it's got that taller display aspect ratio, which I actually really like, which is 16 by 10 rather than a normal 16 by 9 ratio we see now today. With all that said, how do we hook this up to a modern Apple Silicon based Mac like the Mac Studio? And I'm here today to show you exactly how to do that. It's super easy. It's, it's as easy as that password that you use on five different websites. But did you know when you use that same password, you are actually an easy target for hackers? I recently discovered that some of my passwords had actually leaked onto the dark web. Yeah, I mean, some of these could have been old sites I no longer visit, but many of them probably have private info that I don't want to fall into the wrong hands. And I know this because of today's sponsor, Aura. It's the app I started using recently to protect my data from hackers, scammers, and spammers. What are you doing to protect yourself? If the answer is nothing, then I highly recommend you try Aura. And here's how it works. Aura continuously monitors the dark web looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers and sends alerts fast to your phone or email when they find anything. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or credit card in your name, jeez. And they automatically send requests on your behalf to data brokers to remove your information, helping to reduce the amount of spam and robocalls you receive. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted, and their antivirus software will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Identity theft is so common that there's a new victim every 14 seconds. It costs the average victim over $1,000. That means that after a bit over one minute into my video today, five people have already been compromised. You really should protect you and your family from identity theft by going to Aura.com slash JohnnyMC. There's also a link below in my description. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link so you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members personal info on the dark web. And if you sign up, please let me know in the comments below 
If your personal information has been compromised, you won't regret checking. Now back to the video. So once you find one of these displays, you'll be ready to go. And once you have it and hook it up, it'll be really, really hard to go back to those smaller displays. This model uses the first ever DVI standard that was available in 2004. So it required a Mac or Windows PC equipped with a dual link DVI port. And I'll tell you shortly how, even though it has a dual link DVI output, how you can actually connect it to your Mac Studio. And it's this cool adapter from Club 3D on Amazon. And I'll leave a link below for this as well. And this is a much easier way to connect the Apple 30 inch display to the Mac Studio. And I don't know how they baked the technology into this small of an adapter, but it does um, take the DVI-D dual link connection into, converts it into USB-C. And it requires no external power, which is pretty awesome. It will run the 30 inch display at 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. So it will preserve the full resolution of the display. And for $40, which is actually it's on sale right now, that's actually a phenomenal deal. I hope that gives you guys confidence in knowing that you can purchase one of these old 30 inch displays. You find it on the used market, you're able to buy one and easily connect it to your silicone based Mac like the Mac Studio. I highly recommend getting this display because in, in its form factor it is such an awesome display. Even though the color gamut may not be as wide as some of the newer P3 monitors that we're able to get today, it still holds its own especially if you're doing, if you're doing things in the sRGB workspace, things for like web design. The reason why I do like the Apple 30 inch display from a design perspective is aesthetically it just matches so well the design and aesthetic that Apple has preserved. I mean you can see the influence even in the curves of the base. It almost looks like the curve radius matches the Mac Studio curve radius which is really cool to see the preservation of the industrial design echo through the Apple family all the way up to the newest Macs. And that's what really good design means is you're able to take products that were created and manufactured nearly two decades ago and pair it with the newest products and see that design aesthetic is preserved and honored throughout all of their product design. And that really for us creatives, I think that's why a lot of us are drawn to Apple products is because they design wise, they just get out of the way and allow you to design because you're resting easy knowing that the design aesthetic is preserved in the hardware itself, which just allows me to really enjoy designing and creating anyway. So that's pretty cool. Thank you guys for joining me today and discovering how you can save one of these old Apple displays from despair by rescuing it from the Goodwill pile and connecting it to your Mac Studio. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you have not already, please like this video if you enjoyed today's content. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified when I drop a new one. Give me a thumbs up if you can too, and I will see all of you guys on my next one.